What if it was possible to have local fresh groceries delivered right to your door? Think of all the free time you'd have. Well, Instacart gives unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forgot that special ingredient in your favorite dish? Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as fast as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area, and save time and money. I've been using Instacart for over three years. I started using them in Arizona, and I'm using them here in Florida. I love the time-saving convenience. They pick the freshest products, and they keep my eggs safe, too. To receive your first delivery free, follow the link in the show notes so that Instacart knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. It's here, our Empowered Within bonus clips and behind-the-scenes videos from podcast episodes. You can check out the pre-show, the post-show, and everything in between that doesn't actually make it into the podcast episodes. Head over to jenniferpilates.com, click podcast, and click watch videos, and you can watch never-before-seen podcast videos. Enjoy 15% off with this promo code EPW Video 15 if you'd like to be in the know of all of our events, giveaways, and new episodes, head over to jenniferpilates.com and hit subscribe. Thank you so much for being a part of our Empowered Within community. Enjoy today's episode. Welcome to Empowered Within a soul-quenching, transformational podcast that will set your soul on fire. Through candid and inspiring conversations, leading experts, celebrities, healers, and I share our journeys of how we've overcome challenges to living an empowered life from within. I'm your host, Jennifer Pilates. Welcome to another episode of Empowered Within. Hi there, and welcome to the show. I'm excited to have with us today former NFL kicker Sean Connolly of the Detroit Lions, Indianapolis Colts, and the New York Jets. Sean suffered career-ending injuries from overtraining. He began practicing yoga as part of his rehabilitation and soon embraced yoga's mindfulness, meditation, and philosophy as a new life direction. Now a yoga teacher himself, he owns the amazing yoga studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with his lovely wife. His new book is The Point After, How One Resilient Kicker Learned There Was More to Life Than the NFL. Welcome to the show, Sean. Oh, thanks for having me, Jennifer. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. So tell me, when did all this transpire for you? When were you encouraged that you needed to hang up your cleats and uh, have a moment? It, it actually took a while for me. So I, I played in the NFL for three and a half years. And, and like a lot of athletes, I had a hard time letting go. The only reason why I, I stopped playing is because my my leg and my hip and my back were in such bad shape that I physically couldn't perform at, at the level that I need to perform in the NFL. And to the point... Um, when I was with the New York Jets and I was with the team physician and he said, like, you can't play again. Like your leg is your hip flexor is gone. So you have to hang it up. And even with that, those words and the diagnosis, I, I kept trying to uh, get back to the NFL. I kept training, kept hoping. So I spent a few years just like, like spinning wheels, but luckily at some point I, I figured out this is, this was a lost cause and it was, it was time to move on. Wow. I can only imagine what was going through your mindset because did you ever have a plan B? No, no, I did not. That was a problem. Yeah. A lot, a lot of athletes, we, for me, I started playing football at a very young age at, at eight years old. And so for me, I always envisioned myself being in the NFL for a very long time. And so when my, my route went in that direction when I was able to play um, college football for the University of Pittsburgh and then get signed with the Detroit Lions. At that point there, I really figured, hey, I've made it. This is it. Like now I really am. I'm, I'm what I always wanted to be. I'm an NFL football player. So when that didn't happen, yeah, that was that was difficult to accept. Yeah, because it was, it was like my identity. And I, I thought that's all I could do. And I never really had much of a backup plan because I always thought that football would bring would, would bring me happiness. It was like the only thing that would do that. Of course. So I'm sure everyone is wondering, who do we have to credit for introducing you to yoga during your NFL rehabilitation? <laughs> <laughs> you could probably guess my, my wife, Karen, she was a I guess you could say like, like a yoga pioneer because she was into yoga before it really became hip and cool. So she was into it 
during my football career in the nineties and then yoga was poo-pooed, especially poo-pooed in the NFL, in the NFL. Like if you trained at that time, like you know, now a lot of NFL teams now have yoga teachers. My wife and I even work with the Steelers and university of Pittsburgh football team. So now it's now they want it and it's accepted. But back then, if you did anything like yoga or meditation, that was considered a wimpy or foo-foo. It just, it, that's not how you became like a better player. So when I had injuries, during my NFL career, my wife was into it. She's like, Hey, why don't you do yoga? It'll help your back. And she would tell me over and over again. But I just like, to me, like that just didn't make any sense. So, like how would something like that's not macho or um, hard or anything like that work for me? And so of course she was right. But by that, by the time I, I embraced yoga, my career was already over. Oh my goodness. How amazing though, that here this whole time, the universe was sending you these signs through your beautiful <laughs> wife. And you were like, yeah, no, hold on a minute. <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. When did you realize that you were totally going to be pivoting your career from being in the NFL to being a yoga teacher and then an owner of a yoga studio? Because that's a big deal, even the difference between being a, a teacher and a studio owner. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't right away. It wasn't right when my, my career ended. Cause I, I, I felt like I had to fill the void of, you know, being in the world of competition, like with football, I had to have something that was really exciting again. So I got into, I got into sales, pharmaceutical sales, biotech sales. Cause I thought that maybe this could do it like being in the business world. But during this time, I was also starting to practice yoga and meditation just for like physical reasons. But what really hit me was when I started to practice it on a regular basis. And I realized I started to have these little like moments. I, my father passed away the same time my, my football career ended. So I had a, I never really dealt with that when that happened. But what I noticed is the more I did yoga and meditation, I was able to, to look at my father's passing differently. I was also able to look at my career differently because when my career first ended, I went into this whole self-loathing, like, why did you beat up your body? Why did you make this decision, sign with this NFL team? versus this? So I started to really question. So I went through a few years, I just had all this regret and so forth. But then I discovered that the yoga really helped me process all that. And, and because it helped me both physically, because that was the easy part, just practicing yoga a lot helped, helped my body. But then I, I realized, wow, it's helping me more than just physically. It's helping me emotionally, spiritually. Maybe this is something I can really, I, I can now, I can give back and, 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 and maybe help others who go through something similar. Maybe they weren't a professional football player, but maybe they had something that they are are struggling with, whatever. It's not necessarily a physical football injury, but something else. And so that's what really sold me on on, on actually teaching yoga. Do you remember the moment, that aha moment when you were like, I think we're going to open a studio? Mm. For, for me, it was probably when I, I, I was taking one of my, my wife's yoga classes and I, I remember being in class and just going through all this body shaming. I remember they, they had mirrors on the side of the wall. And I remember looking in the mirrors, seeing, seeing how my body like couldn't move. And I, I really struggled with that thinking, wow, like my body now is, is, I thought at the time I used like the words, like maybe like pathetic. I was just so ashamed of how my body now was failing me. And then I remember like being in Shavasana in that class and just feeling a sense of, of like gratitude. So there was like a shift just in that one class. And I think for me, that's where I was like, wow, this is, there's something more here beyond like a physical practice. And, and that's or maybe we should just take this to the next level and teach it, open studios and, and, and spread it as best as we can. I love that. Now, do you have more than one studio? We, we did pre-pandemic, but okay. now we, yeah, we have one. Got, <laughs> we, we, we had a few, but yeah. Yeah. So we've got the one baby and that's what we're going with. Mm -hmm. Good. But you're still, and you're right. still working with NFL teams. That's huge to be able to open up through that outlet and to open that conversation and that mindfulness really changes lives all over. So what... An amazing shift from just working on self to now helping that arena that you were once so amazing in. Are you ready to lose inches, increase strength, and tone your body from head to toe? Are you ready for a total body, mind, and spirit transformation? I am excited to announce that I am launching my exclusive eight-week Pilates Return to Life training program. This will give you an opportunity to have a total body, mind, and spirit transformation of health and wellness to a new lifestyle. Imagine in seven days, you will feel a difference. In 14 days, you will see a difference. And in eight weeks, you will have your new Pilates body. 
body. So what do you say? Want to join me on the mat? Head over to jenniferpilates.com today. Space is limited. Use a special promo code EW and the word special, EW special, to receive $200 off while space is available. Head on over to jenniferpilates.com and I'll see you on the mat. Yeah, and, and I really enjoy that because for the players, what I try to help them with is not just the physical, and they buy into that right away. Like when I teach a yoga class or meditation to athletes, like they, they buy in, oh, this will help me focus. This will give me like an edge. This will help my performance. This will help my physical recovery. But now there's, there, there, you know, because I think mindfulness is, is, is becoming more popular. Like you have players like LeBron James doing it, but Tom Brady was into yoga. So now they want more. And I think what they really want more is like, how can that they want it to help them off the field as well. So I think they're finding now it's on the open athletes can now talk more freely about mental health. Like that wasn't the case just a few years ago. So I think the athletes now you're seeing them embrace, like I, I want, they want to be healthy, not just for their sport, but they want to be healthy off the field as well. So I think we're starting to see that shift happen. Yeah. I love that shift that's happening for everyone. What would you say to the listener out there who's saying, yeah, but are you, Sean, yoga, really? What are you going to say to get them to go, okay, I'll give it a try? Yeah. That, that, that's a million dollar question. It's such a great question too. Cause I, I know for myself, like I needed like my wife to poke and prod me for years. And then even when she did, then I took the class, it took me like five or six, seven classes to, to embrace it. But I think it's just, there's the incentive I think is just to help like process things. It's also to help just with the day-to-day life to like, to, like stepping out from the craziness. So I think like physically it works. Like we know that for sure. And I remember when I first got into yoga, like you had to speak and just, I don't know what exactly the word is, but oh, it'll help you with patience. It'll help you be, help you be calmer, but there was no studies to back that up. But now we even know that yoga can help. It changes the whole, the chemistry of your brain through the breathing. So I just think what I like to tell people is it's a different way of looking at fitness. Like we used to look at fitness. Oh, I want to have strong muscles. I want to be toned. I want to lose weight. I want to look a certain way, but really if our minds aren't healthy, are we really, how healthy are we? So I think that's, I think like that's a true incentive as, especially I've known as I get older to yoga can help, Yoga or meditation can really help you be happier. Yeah, I think that's an incredible statement. And right there, like you you had me sold. Of course, I love yoga anyways, but it's true. It's about being healthy from the inside out. And especially <laughs> once we have that, then almost anything is possible and life gets better around us. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've seen like this study out there before and 90% of disease comes from stress or, or, or like 90% of, of the visits to, to our primary care doctors comes from something like stemming from stress. And so like yoga can help possibly prevent a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What do you recommend for a practice for someone, say someone that's starting out and then how should someone maybe progress up? Yeah. I think the key is to be really patient and open in the beginning because it's very easy. You know, I've heard this story before, like where someone will go to their first yoga class and they go to a studio where they take a class that's the style doesn't fit like what they're looking for. And then they think that the all yoga is like that and, and they give up. So I think the first thing to look at is just give yourself time and patience. Like, Hey, I'm going to explore yoga for the next few months. I'm going to try whether it's in person, different studios or online, and just look for a type of yoga that like, like jives with you. So if it's, if the first one doesn't like, there's probably something out there. And I think luckily now with yoga, we have such a range of different styles. If there's a style out there for all of us, we just have to you know, have the, the patience to, to find that. And even if we find the style, then we have to find the teacher within that style sometimes as well. So it's just giving it that time and that openness. Yeah. What style do you prefer? So I, I teach power yoga because coming, going from football, that was like a natural, okay, here's something that's, that's hard. It's sweaty and, and all, and it has a lot, a lot of strong physical movements, but my practice at home is quite different. It's more passive, more restorative. I, mean, I, I go to the studio and do the power yoga, but I, I like to do both because I, I, for me, I get benefits from the, the strong physical, but also I also like just restorative stuff as well. So yeah, I agree. And I think, and I ask that because I think it's important for people to hear that description because sometimes they think of yoga just in terms of restorative, which is amazing. But there's so many more benefits to like a power yoga or maybe a vinyasa flow or whatever that may be. So I love that you're admitting to doing both. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell me about your book. What takeaways on your new book, The Point After, what takeaway do you hope that readers walk away with? 
Mm. Yeah, my, my biggest hope was that like we're more than that, that we think we are, like these labels we put on ourselves. And that was like like the main theme of the book. My whole life, I thought I was going to be a football player. And I thought I had my whole life figured out and I would be happy when this happened. And I'd be happy when this happened. And then a lot of that didn't happen. And then I realized there was more to life than beyond what it being a football player. And you know, how I got the subtitle when I was in the NFL, there was this guy I played with, Barry Sanders. It's like one of the greatest running backs of all time for the Detroit Lions. And I was a rookie and we're playing the Dallas Cowboys. And I came in one night from the hotel before the game. And it's like 2 a.m. And I was doing the, the stupid things that rookies do. I was out, you know, partying or whatever. And I, I sat down and I asked him, hey, I was concerned about like my career not work or my career not working out the Detroit Lions that I could be cut. And he said, hey, one thing you need to remember is that there's more to life than the NFL. And so that like really stuck with me. I didn't really believe it when he said it, but like, it was just, it makes so much sense now that I, I always thought this is who I am, but really it was just part of the journey. There was so much more to you. So what do you see in moving forward? What's next with Sean and your lovely wife? What do you have planned now? Yeah, well, we just have just like lots of yoga and meditation plan. We're just like, like teaching as, 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 as much as we can. We, we also, my wife and I are really into working with the environment and climate change. So we're trying to bring those two together somehow. But yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just spreading meditation and, and yoga as much as we can. We just, it's, I think right now, especially what's happening in the world, like more and more people are, are, are turning to it and they're finding it's, it, it can have some place in, in their lives. And, and it's just, it doesn't have to be a huge part. I, th- I think just like taking a few minutes a day of some sort of mindfulness practice, whether it's yoga, meditation, or even just w- walking through the woods every day can be therapeutic. Yeah. It's just doing more in, 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 in that world. Mm-hmm. And with your studio, are you all back in the studio now, or do you also have virtual classes? Yeah, we're a hybrid. We we do both. So we have in in person. We're limiting the size, but we have also we have we have a, uh, an on demand platform that has all kinds of different yoga offerings and meditations on there. So listeners, there's no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I love that opportunity. What one moment through your life was your biggest aha moment? Mm, to biggest date? aha moment. Yeah. Wow. That's such a great question. It was probably for me when I would have to say my father passed away at the time my, my career ended. And I, I when they both happened so simultaneously, I think for me, that was when I realized I had to be more like in the present moment. And, and to be more grateful because I, I was diagnosed at a young age with ADD, which is now they call it ADHD. So I always struggled with that. And so it, it would help me a lot. My ADD would help like drive me to, to, to do more and be busy. And so for like football training that helped yet at the same time is also very mentally destructive because if I didn't do well, like in sports and something, I would beat myself up. And I think when both of those happened at the same time, and I started to get into yoga and meditation, I think that's when it just made me realize, like, I just you you, just really appreciate like every moment because like with my father, like I just lived in denial the whole time he was like really sick and, 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 and dying that I thought, Oh, it'll be okay. Something at night. So I didn't really appreciate that time. And same with my NFL career. I was so concerned about what was next to my NFL career that I really, I don't know if I really had a chance to really smell the roses while I was playing. So that was probably my, I guess you'd say my biggest aha moment. Didn't all happen at once, but it was something I reflect back and, and noticed. Right. Well, first, you know, I am so sorry about your father's passing and I can only imagine that's, those are two significant life events to transpire at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it, 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 and my mom lost her, her parents at the same time. So my grandparents, this was, all, this was all within a handful of months. Yeah. So it was like, it just oh one thing to the next and yeah, yeah. But yeah. So I think that was just, it was, it was a really you know, tough at the time, but like, like I said, it just helped me like realize that, wow, I got to really appreciate every day. So What if it was possible to have local fresh groceries delivered right to your door? Think of all the free time you'd have. Well, Instacart gives unlimited grocery delivery for one low monthly fee. Forgot that special ingredient in your favorite dish? Instacart can deliver it to your front door in as fast as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area, and save time and money. I've been using Instacart for over three years. I started using them in Arizona, and I'm using them here in Florida. I love the time-saving convenience. They pick the freshest products, and they keep my eggs safe, too. To receive your first delivery free, follow the link in the show notes so that Instacart knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store again. 
Eating better is the key to better health, and Mother Nature offers us all the right ingredients. Eating a healthy, balanced diet that includes plenty of fruits and vegetables isn't always easy in today's lifestyle. That's why Juice Plus offers Mother Nature's gift and convenient, easy-to-consume products that are as close to nature as they possibly could be. Plant-based nutrition from fruits and vegetables has been demonstrated by science to give your body the building blocks it needs to help you look better and feel better and live a longer and healthier life. Juice Plus products offer to improve heart health, the immune system, skin health, and other important aspects of health and wellness. I personally have been taking Juice Plus whole food nutrition for over 20 years. I swear by it. It's exactly what I need to help me keep my immune system healthy as it possible possibly can be. Juice Plus Promise is simple. It helps bridge the gap between what you should eat and what you do eat every day. Nothing more, nothing less. Follow the link in the show notes so that Juice Plus knows that we sent you and to help support the show. Juice Plus, plant-based nutrition from fruits and vegetables offers Mother Nature's gift to help you look better and feel better and live a longer and healthier life. Right, which is incredible advice, especially, and I, I would hope that we've all learned that, if nothing else, after the last couple of years here to really appreciate where our lives are at right now. If there was one piece of advice that you could give our listeners what would that be? Oh, that's such a great question. I think it would just be to, you know, just, uh, just from personal experience, going back to be like practicing some sort of having a gratitude practice. And I wish I did this more often, but I like to journal, like what I'm grateful for sometimes when I lose it, because it's, it's very easy to still get caught up in negativity and worry about things in the world. And I find when I bring in, I think about all the things that are positive in my life, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm grateful for, it can really help shift me, help get out of that those negative thinking. So that would be it, I guess. Yeah, that is great, great advice. I'm a journaler too. Mm. And uh, so every morning, keep that practice of what am I grateful for? And to really embrace that, it really helps to bring one to center, I feel. Yeah. And I used to think it was a little like hokey to actually just like, like to write it down. Cause I used to always say, Oh, write down what you're great. But I think like thinking about what you're grateful is great. But when you actually write it down, you see the words and you put on a post-it note, you, you slap it on your, like your, on your computer or on the wall or like anything, I think just like hearing and seeing the message over and over again starts to, it gets into you. It really does. It really begins to shift the energy. I mm-hmm. love that. And then, which then shifts everything around because you're the ripple exactly. effect to everything mm-hmm. around you. All right. Well, Sean, we are getting to this point in the show where I ask this one question. Are you ready? Go for it. All right. What is one thing that no one knows about Sean? Wow. There's, there's, so, there's so many things. Wow. You can take well, it anywhere you want. <laughs> I can take it anywhere I anywhere want. Anywhere you want. <laughs> wow. There's so many different ways I could go here. Actually, that I, I love to... <laughs> I guess this is like most recently, I love to cook with sweet potatoes, like anything with sweet potatoes. So like, I'm just a, I'm a nerd for finding different recipes with sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes. I, I th- they're very underrated. I believe they're completely underrated. I could use sweet potato and spinach every day. Mm. And I'm a new fan of the purple ones. Ooh, haven't gone there yet. Do they taste different? They do. And then if you add them with oatmeal and maple syrup in a blender, <gasps> now you have sweet potato pudding. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's life-changing. That is life-changing. <laughs> now, have you done a twice-baked sweet potato? Not. Okay. So what I is, want... What is that? It's delicious. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> okay. So that's your challenge for the, for the week. <laughs> it's twice-baked okay, sweet potato. <laughs> Uh, anything I, I can, I'm always looking to add to the repertoire. Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm on a sweet potato burrito kick. Oh, how do you do that? Oh, it's just just like a burrito, and then a sweet potato. You know, take them, cut them up into cubes, okay, and and boil them, and then just add corn, black beans, guacamole. Oh my gosh! Now I'm starving. Salsa, yeah. That sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm so yeah. The, the sweet potato is just like the like the texture. It's just yeah. Tr- yeah. Oh my gosh. So hungry now. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing that tidbit. Now I feel like I need to up my sweet potato game a little bit here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sean, will you please share with our audience, where can they get in touch with you and find out more and possibly purchase your book and come and take yoga with you and your wife? Oh, thank you for asking. Oh uh, yeah. Sean Conley.net S E A N C O N L E Y. Yeah. Everything's on there. The book, they can find that everywhere as well where they find books and yeah, the, all the yoga's on there as well. 
Awesome. Sean, thank you so much for being here today. This has been a blast for sharing your story and your incredible energies. I really appreciate it so much. Thank you. This is fun. Appreciate it. You are so welcome. Well, as we say, until next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Empowered Within with Jennifer Pilates. Your feedback is important. It helps me to connect with you and gives me insight into who you are and what you're enjoying about the show. For today's show notes and discount codes from today's sponsors, head over to jenniferpilates.com. Until next time, may you live an empowered life from within.